Have ever seen Everworld's customer page animation? It's a really impressive piece of work. I think it would be a great learning experience to rebuild it ourselves. We won't be building it from scratch though, we'll use some shortcuts to make the process go more smoothly. That way we can focus on learning how to create that animation and uh, we'll improve upon it. So let's get started. The first step is to gather our resources. This is the most difficult part to cover, so let's get started. If you take a look at this animation, there are actually two key factors to take note of. The first is how to use this mouse hover effect and the second is how to animate the text when we move the mouse inside that hover container. It's actually quite simple to do. We are going to use the GCP plugin to achieve this animation. By the way, we built a portfolio using GCP and some advanced techniques. I coded it in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So we can use it in React, View, etc. So if you're interested in checking them out, feel free to do so. And if you want to learn GACP along with the 3D websites, check out the professional 3GS course as well. Now that we have our resources, let's move on to the next step, creating a boilerplate code. All right, now we have our resources. Let's actually create the boilerplate template. So let's start with the HTML. I'll create a boilerplate template in VS Code using Control plus space, and then I'll remove all the unnecessary details from this code. Next, let's define a class name for the body. Let's call it demo1. Then we'll declare a main element and inside that element, let's define a div class called frame. Inside the frame element, let's add some text for a frame title. Moving on, let's create a grid for each of our element. This grid will remain as a parent grid and instead of it, we're going to create a subgrids to make those little square boxes. So let's actually do that uh, by creating another div class called grid items. Inside the grid item elements, we are going to add an image, a label, and an H1 tag. We're going to repeat this process until we are good to go. Once we are done with that, we're going to link our JavaScript. I'm going to import GACP and index.js. Note that I'm using the type equals module attribute. This tells browser to load the script using the JavaScript module system. This allows the browser to load the script asynchronously and to catch it for future use. It also allows the browser to enforce the module's dependencies so that the script can be only loaded if all of its dependencies are loaded. Once we are done with that, let's move on to the CSS part. Inside CSS, we are setting up the box sizing property for all the elements on the page. This will ensure that all the elements have their width and height calculated based on their content, not their borders or padding. We are also setting the font size for the root element, which is the HTML element. This will set the font size for all element on the page. Finally, we are setting up some custom colors for the text, background, links, and link hover states. These colors can be used to style the elements on the page. Next, we are setting up the style for the body elements. The body element is a main container for all the other elements on the web page. So we are setting the margin to zero, which means there will be no margin around the body element. We are setting the color to the custom color that we defined earlier, which is great. We are setting the background color to custom color that we defined earlier, which is black. We are setting the font family to a custom font. We are also specifying a few fallback fonts in case if user browser doesn't have that font installed. We are setting the font smoothing to anti-aliased, which makes the text look more smoother on the screens. We are setting the font smoothing to grayscale on macOS, which will make the text look sharper on macOS screens. Next, we are going to add a page loader. We are going to perform a simple 3D animation on the loader anim function. Then I'll stylize the rest of the things to make this web page look closer to Everworld. Once we are done with that, it's time to move on to the next step, breaking down the animation. The first step we want to work on is on the moving text animation. To do this, I'm going to create a new file called utils.js. We'll integrate this file into items.js later. In utils.js, we're going to define these three functions, which is lerp, get mouse position and get random string. This lerp function performs linear interpolation. Linear interpolation is a method of finding a value between two known values. The function takes three arguments, which is a, b, and n. a and b are the two values and n is the value in between them. The function returns the value that is n percent of the wave from a to b. For example, if a is zero, b is 10, and n is going to be 0 0.5 then this function will return the value of 5. Then let's move on to the get mouse position, which gets the most position. This function takes one argument, e, which is an event object. The function returns an object with the mouse position. The object has two properties, x and y. The x property is the mouse position on the horizontal axis, and the y is the property is the mouse position on the vertical axis. And then let's move on to the next function, which is get random string. 
which generates a random string of a given length. This function takes one argument, length, which is the length of the string. The function returns a string of random characters. The characters are chosen from this string. And then we'll export this function so we can use them in item.js. In item.js, we're going to define a class called item. This class represents a DOM element with some interactive behavior. The class has the following properties, which has DOM, an object that stores DOM element and its decoration sub-element. Rendered styles, an object that stores current and previous X and Y coordinates for animations. Random string, a random string of 2000 characters. A scroll value, the current scroll portion of the window and the rect, the size and portion of the DOM element. The class has following methods, which has a constructor. This constructor method initializes the class properties and we have calculate size portion. This method calculates the current scroll portion and size of the DOM element. And we have init events. This method registers event listeners for a resize, mouse move, mouse enter and mouse leave events. And we have loop render, which is a method request for a new animation frame to start or continue the rendered loop. And we have stop rendering, which is a method that actually cancels any ongoing render loop. And we have render, which is a method that renders the current frame. Actually, this is how the render method works. It first clears the request ID for the next frame. Then it calculates the difference between the current scroll portion and the stored ones. Then it calculates the new translation values based on the mouse portion, scroll difference and the elements portion. If its first animation tick sets the previous value to be the same as the current ones, then it updates the previous value to be a linear interpolation between the previous and the current value. Then it applies the new styles to the DOM element using the CSS variable. Finally, it sets the deco elements uh, in HTML to a random string and requests the new frame. Although we have completed the animation, it's probably not going to work because we haven't initialized it in item.js. So let's do that now. In index.js, we're going to import the item class from the item.js file and then iterate over all the grid item image element in the document and create a new item instance for each one. So now let's check out the results. And that's it. We have now successfully rebuilt Everwall's customer page animation. That was a great learning experience and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.